uh, research. Uh, she has worked on uh, image processing, uh, with deep learning, and uh, particular specializing in communication model. And Dongun uh, is uh, just newly graduated from uh, Seoul National University. Uh, today they're going to present the uh, Content creation by user. Yeah, so that's uh, welcome to see this. Uh, thank you for the introduction from the So, uh, yeah, uh, we are uh, presenting together for the uh, content creation by inserting object. And this is also an important application for data driven components. for traffic scene images and the right one is human host estimation and both targeting and understanding the content of the image. So right now let's consider a very different direction. Can we create a new object or human when seen in the scene? So suppose we already have a human template or human host. If we randomly put them onto the scene, the result will look pretty fake like this. For example, the left person looks like a giant and the right person looks even smaller than the TV set. So both of them looks like floating air, so this is really like weird. We can make the task even more challenged. In many real applications, we do, do not even know the specific shape, which is not provided like a template, because we hope to generate them as well to make them fit to the given scene, uh, scene content. So um, the other factor we also want to address in this work is the geometry. We hope the generated instance can fit into the environment. For example, here we show a video, uh, which also provided from our team. So basically, we hope to put human inside of the teaching. And usually, we, we expect someone to be there, but this is what we found. We, we randomly do it. There is no reasonable position scale and uh, behavior. So. Um, we found that this is really a difficult task, even we try to manually deal with it. So let's go back to the concept of affordance. Affordance represents what function can object be used for and how they interact with the environment. For example, given a traffic in the left, we expect that cars are always in the middle of the road and the persons are on the roadside or around the cars. And likewise, on the inverse scene, we can infer a lot of functionalities of objects by observing human activity. Well, uh, for example, where is the sequel and sample region? So, in certain object instance, it's an important way and interesting way to model the affordances. Both are categories that are frequently seen and are highly related to human activity. And this task is also very challenging because it requires the model to fully understand the global scene context, semantics, and geometry and we aim to uh, condition on uh, even a single scene image, so the input is just a single image. So it is also another way of doing scene understanding many tasks like robotics because we do not really care about semantic, uh, for example, pixel semantic meanings in such kind of task. Um, instead, we more care about the functionalities that are related to human activity. So instance manipulation would be a good way to, uh, to, to study. So in this talk, we will quickly uh, um, cover uh, three works. Uh, so first, Tom will choose his work during the internship for synthesis and placement of object instance. And uh, after that, I will introduce the uh, extension to the 3D indoor environment. And finally, Tom will go on to introduce the work related to video. All right, thank you, CJ. So I'm Dong Li, and this is a um, work about inserting objects in 2D images. So this is what is done with um, the page, and new engine, and yarn, and video. So here's some um, practical usage of our proposed algorithm. So given this mental map, the um, user wants to insert more objects. Let's say the user wants to say, um, um, give me more person. Then what you can do is um, we can insert a new person like this. And then you can do this one by one. <laughs> until it satisfies. 
And then now you say, okay, stop. And now give me more car. Then I can sort of more cars like this. So our input is a semantic map. And um, the semantic map and uh, is some segmentation map. And we insert a new object into both of the semantic map and the some segmentation map. So why we use the semantic map instead of large image? So there are two reasons. So the first one is on semantic map, you don't have to worry about you know, large appearances, so it's more easier and it's more regularly. Right? And the second reason is um, if you think about the simulator or game or virtual world, you don't start from large images, you start from designing the whole world, like semantic world, right? So in that case, it's good to have an algorithm to insert um, automatically insert objects into the scene. So that um, summarizes our three goals here. So given this input, we want to predict um, where to put those objects and what to their shape. So what we want to do is along where and what jointly, and we want it to be on um, end-to-end traveling network. In addition to that, we want to have um, diverse outputs. So given this input, we want to, um, to person left on the left on the right, car on the right and left. Yeah. So if you look at the car direction, um, okay, okay. If you look at the car here, um, this car is directed uh, on the left, and this car is directed to the right. So uh, this symmetric um, new shape is symmetrically coherent to the uh, context of this movie. So um, here's the main idea of this talk. So let's talk about how to insert an object, where to find a um, good place. So one option would be you can annotate each pixel. So let's say you want to insert a person here, then um, probability of this pixel to be zero, and probability for this pixel could be you know, it's a road, so it's a 0 0.2, it could be 0 0.8, right? So um, it's a you know, first thing comes to in your mind, but, but there are obvious drawbacks. The first one is an, it's an expensive annotation. And the second one is um, you know, different users will only take different properties, so it's inconsistent. Uh, second one would be um, you can leverage the fact that object was already there, so you can just pick an object and just remove this object. And then you intend this hole and then say the algorithm that, um, okay, there was originally a person there, so it's a good place to insert this person, right? But there's also two drawbacks, so this algorithm relies on the performance of the intent algorithm, and Many of the intent algorithms, like uh, actually all the intent algorithms, they leave artifacts. So they use data as my thing. So here's what we did. So we insert a box here. And we just say, okay, if the box is here, then it's bad. If it's here, then it's good, right? Um, so if we have this kind of fine transform here, then we can uh, insert this unique box into here. And if we learn somehow um, this fine transform, then we can. Uh, find a place to insert this object, and based on this, we can again um, import the shape of this object and insert this object based on the same contrast from here to the scene. So I don't want to go into all of the different details here, but I'm going to show you the um, main idea here. So it's x is um, in the uh, symmetric map, and z is a random vector. So based on these two, we uh, train a special transform network, and which um, gives you some um, fine transform parameters. And based on this parameter, we put a um, um, box here. And then we call it as a fake image. So this fake image has one box and one symmetric scene. And you know, now we can build a uh, bunch of it. So we want to have a real image, which has a one box and one scene. So we pick a random um, symmetric map here, and you already know where the person is, so we just put a box on it. Then we get a real uh, image here. So we use um, this parameter to train this whole network and we get the parameter. So all of other these unsupervised and supervised tab, they are designed to make this all more diverse. And this type of architecture is same for the a very similar for the what we do. So let's go into um, some experimental results. So here's the um, result of uh, sampling of 100 different vectors. So the red is for person, blue is for car. So person is usually on the uh, sidewalk, car is usually on the road. And you can also um, fix the wear vector and you can change the what random vector. Then you can uh, synthesize a different shape person at the same location like this. Okay, this is a one cycle of um, synthesizing a large image from this symmetric map. 
If you notice in this map, you insert that person on the right, and then you can use um, just off the shelf uh, just to PSH and kind of migrate to synthesize our images. Or the other option is since you know the shape of this inserted object, you can find the um, nearest neighbor in your database and bring those RD pixels into this thing. So these are two ways of synthesize our images. Okay, let's go back to Shade. So let's move to another work, putting people in the same. So on top of the previous work, this work can also generate geometrically correct human pose instance. And in this work, I will need model the avoidance by generating reasonable human pose in the scene. And by doing this, the model will learn the basic uh, interaction between human and the three environment. For example, where the person should sit, stand, or what type of uh, pose gestures it should hold. Uh, for example, in a particular environment, and the input of our model is a single scene image, and then we generate the 3D pose, and we can also visualize in the work zone. So uh, the goal is that we hope to ensure the generated pose are semantically and physically reasonable. So by semantic reasonable, we mean that the pose should take common actions. For example, in the kitchen, we expect a person to be sitting or cooking rather than jumping or dancing. Also, in uh, this work, try to satisfy basic interaction. For example, a standing human should be supported by the floor, and the sitting one should uh, uh, sit on top of a sofa or chair. So now our goal is to train a model that uses the semantic and the geometry knowledge. So how can we train this model in a data-driven way? Basically, we record the work we have in 2D. Basically, we want to merge the geometry uh, information. We need a same data set that contains images, 3D information, cameras, as well as a lot of real human. Unfortunately, there is no such data set. So what we do is to separate this work into two stages. In the first stage, we try to synthesize millions of born truth poses. And then in the second stage, we try to synthesize data set, uh, we try to use the synthesized data set to train the 3D pose predictive model. So uh, although there is no such 3D data set, there do exist in 2D avoidance data set extracted from the TV shows. In addition, we also have another data set with rendered synthetic images, which does not contain any human. And uh, in this stage, we try to leverage the uh, semantic knowledge and uh, the geometry knowledge from respectively two different data sets and then to synthesize millions of bond to schools. So uh, to do so, we first learn a pulse generator in the 2D scene images, also the 2D avoidance data set, and then we can adapt the, this model on the synthetic image and, and then we can project it into the 3D voxels because we already know the ground truth camera parameters. And uh, after that, we can make a minor adjustment uh, to the pose so that we can get the ground truth pose. So in detail, we first learn a heat map of sequel and sample regions for the 2D scene images. And uh, after that, we follow the 2D avoidance work to generate a human pose uh, sampled at the uh, predicted locations. And after that, we can run the 2D generator on a synthetic image, and we found that most of such generated pose are semantically correct. But since there is no geometry information, they are usually geometrically incorrect. For example, this person actually looks even reasonable on the 2D images, but if we project it back into 3D, we found the person is actually set into the, uh, the bed. So luckily, there is an important prior we can use. We can sample a person's height from a Gaussian distribution, for example, with a mean of 1.7 meter, and then along the camera parameter, it is easy to project the generated pose back into the uh, uh, into the scene to make further adjustment in voxel. And uh, for instance, if a man is sitting with the bed, we can simply move it to the nearest physical location. And here we use two geometry constraints, the free space constraint and the supporting constraint, and both can efficiently implement it through the 3D convolution in voxels. And in this way, this is what we generate. We can generate millions of pulse, 
and here we show two examples. And this is more than a data set because we can uh, always generate different diverse posts. It's more like a data set, a data set synthesizer. So on top of the synthesizer, in the second stage, we can train the end-to-end -end post generator uh, with a conceptually similar module that interested by Don Home. We also have a well module and a work module, and the input in the three testing is just a single scene image, and we will output a, a predictive post in 3D scene, where we got the X, Y, and depth to represent all the joints. So there, uh, there's a lot of big difference in details with the previous work because we are dealing with posts instead of bunny box um, and uh, uh, segmentations. Also, we do not use any STN. We, here, we actually predict the body torso from the well module. And then we directly use this one as a bridge between the well and the work module. And uh, uh, this also controls the generation of the, uh, each individual joint uh, from the work module. We also use a human post cluster to regularize the generated posts to have reasonable gestures and scales that like not drifting too far away. And uh, here is our level architecture, which also contains help, supervised, and unsupervised paths. So, um, in order to enforce uh, whether a post is in intersected with anything, we propose the geometry aware discriminator, and the input is a concatenation of the predicted depth map for uh, both the post and the same image. And uh, then we use a discriminator to distinguish between the real and fake so that the discriminator can enforce the generator to hallucinate the layout of the object even from the single input image. So we found this, uh, this discriminator is amazingly good to correct the geometry relations. And uh, finally, I will show uh, some generated codes in the image and the scene also. And uh, this is our result. And the second one. So uh, we can see that both gestures and geometry of our generated posts can fit perfectly to the same image in both 2D and uh, the corresponding voxels. Yeah, so this is the work of 3D. And uh, next, the uh, Doko will introduce the leader. Okay, now it's time to move on to video. So this one is with Thomas and Mijian and Google Cloud AI. And this is a similar paper, so you can find me at the Thursday morning post session for more clinical details. Okay, let's review some of the insertion methods for um, content creation. I click on axis based on the amount of user control. So on the left means it's less user control. So uh, it means um, the algorithm automatically predicts the location and share the object. So this part is covered by this tutorial. In the, in the middle, um, user specify one and algorithm automatically handle the other. So let's say a um, user gives some location information. So it means that a user can draw, draw a bounding box on the image and say, okay, put a car inside, then the algorithm will um, so a random a new car like that. And the other way is, um, um, user specifies some um, object template and the algorithm automatically finds how to work this template to fit into this image, like the swasses and swasses. But what's more interesting for the creation would be, you know, user has more control. So user can specify both location and shape. It means user says, okay, I want to put this object right here. Right. So it's, um, it's on the right, so let's cover that part. So here's the main goal. We have two videos. And we want to insert an um, object in video A into video B. Right? And this is how we um, define the object. So we have we assume that we have a bounding box of an object. So the segmentation of the videos is too expensive. Once we have um, the bounding box, a user to select that one of the bounding box and pick the person and drag and drop into the other scene. And that looks like that. So the person is in that scene, but the problem is it's not realistic. So our goal is to make this one more realistic. So let's see why this is an important problem. So on the left, you can see a video of how they make Game of Thrones season six. So in order to make um, short video clips, there are much uh, there are lots of um, techniques inside. So 
So you see on green screen and markers to insert those giant into the scene, and you see a bunch of people running again and again and again to get multiple video clips, and then export um, most of all those video clips and using some specific software. Right? It's um, not easy for a normal person. Um, it costs lots of time and money, so you need video content generation or AR, VR applications, or even better than that, it costs money. So, we pick um, object insertion is a primary equation for editing videos. Um, once you can do that, there's a huge benefit. So, there's um, automatic data augmentation for various functional tasks. So, since you're the one who put this object into the scene, you already know the location of the object. It's good for augmenting data for the object detection. You know the trajectory of the person that, so you can use it for object tracking. You know the ID, so you can use it for personal identification. And even you know the instance mask of the person, so you can augment video instance mask, which is very expensive. So this is very important and challenging problem. Okay. So since we're running out of time, I'm gonna skip many of the technical details. You can find me at the post session. I'll, I'll give you the main, main idea here. So we, um, this is how we formalize the problem. We have video A and video B. And let's say we want to insert this person into this and into here. Then we can say that input is these two patches and we don't have this algorithm to give us this kind of outcome. The main challenge here is that you don't have a training pair like this. If you don't have a training pair, like a pair training pair, then that person has to go to video B and make exactly the same pose at every location you want to insert. That's um, technically not feasible, so we treat it as an unsupervised or unpaired problem. And this is a key question that we ask, is, that, is there any data that can give us some provisions to most of this problem? So the answer is yes. We found um, a way to synthesize some fake training data. So uh, on the top row, this is real pairs, so this is what we really want to do. And these two are fake pairs, and they share a generator. So um, these fake pairs can get a um, superior signal, in this case it's a reconstruction signal, um, so that it can help the training of this real pair. Okay. Now we can move on to explain the results. So, On the left, on the upper left is an object video, and on the upper right is our algorithm. On the bottom is some Adobe Premiere CC. There is an automatic blending mode. On the bottom right is some segmentation based method. You just segment um, every frame of the person and copy and paste the person into the scene. So it's based on deep left project reports. As you can see, it's segmentation based method of flickering because the segmentation algorithms are not perfect. And we can transfer um, this person into other videos and we can put cars into other scenes. So our feature could be, um, one of the features is handling occlusions. There are two types of occlusions. Um, you have a person in this source video and this person is already occluded before inserting into the other scene. So how can we deal with this problem is the first one. And the second type of occlusion is, this one is fine, and this person is fine, it's not occluded, but this when this person is you know, inserted in this scene, he has to be uploaded by other objects. Then how can you handle this one? So these two are the main features. Okay, then it's for your attention. We have time for a couple of questions. Another problem is that if the person you want to insert from a video to another is interacting with an object, you also need to deal with that. If it's still interacting with this object or how it's changing. Interaction between objects, yeah. right. Yeah. So for example, walk on, um, person you know, walking the stairs, then he or she would like you know, climbing the stairs. But if you insert that person into the playing ground, then it's flying kind of thing, right? So we are showing like the same geometry are very similar. Yeah, question. Right so what do you have an occlusion on the object? Occlusion. So what happens? I have an occlusion on. So you have a human occlusion, which is blocked by someone. So now you can ask the person to make another video, but you don't need another video. So that's a really important problem. So. We have a signal here, so you have this person, and this person has to be 
including by this person. Yes. So this is small occlusion. The other occlusion is on this one. So this person is already occluded by this one. Yes. In that case, we don't have lag for this person. So we have to synthesize the lag. Right? Okay. Uh, if you just use some segmentation based on that load, like a person came out from nowhere, so it's like a difficult problem. You don't know whether this person is occluded or not. So the drawing section is fine for this kind of video. Um, the goal is to find this part. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's thank the speaker again.